Welcome to my view of Call of the Wild! Side note, by the way, I this film is based on a book. I do not know this book, so I don't know. I do not know how you know like true it is to the book. So this is just from somebody who doesn't know the source material and just went to go and watch the film. This is just my opinion of someone who doesn't know the book. The Call of the Wild. Now this is a film directed by Chris Sanders. I don't know if he's done anything else. And basically the main star of it is Harrison Ford. Karen Gillian is in there as well. If you don't know who Karen Gillian is, she previously starred in Jumanji films and Nebula and Guardians of the Galaxy. She's also in the Matt Smith Doctor Who. So she's done a lot, you know. She's done a lot. And But Harrison Ford is basically the main star of this film. And the film basically tells the story of this dog called Buck and his adventures of trying to find a good owner for himself as well as his adventures kind of through life. You kind of just get the feeling of that you're watching a dog's story. A dog's story, it's like a dog life. And he goes through many owners and then he finally gets to Harrison Ford who becomes his owner for the majority of the film and then you kind of see the relationship blossom at the same time the film, at the same time you kind of see uh, books move into the wild, hence the name Call of the Wild. Ah. But anyway, um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this into a big long review. I want to go and see it because I don't really have much else to do. With it. <laughs> I don't, I'm, on, I'm on a bit of a break, but I I want to go and see it. I have a bit of interest in it. I like Harrison Ford. I'm, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Star Wars. I've from a Star Wars on this channel. You know, I've liked Harrison Ford and has Han Solo, and I've liked him as Indiana Jones. So it goes without saying that. I was expecting to. I, 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 I want to go see it because House of Ford was in it. You know, there's a sense of interest with House of Ford, especially the projects he does. I haven't really seen him much other project other than um, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, and that like, slight bit in Apocalypse Now, basically. So I was kind of. Um, I, I, I was. I, was, I didn't know what to expect with seeing House of Ford this film. I, I really didn't know what to expect because um, it's House of Ford, you know. It's, you have that sense that if he's in it. Then it might be then it might be like a really good film. And I'm gonna say this now. It's not Oscar worthy. I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say that it's not Oscar worthy. But it's a delightful, heartwarming film. I'm not gonna lie there. The relationship because at the heart of the whole film is the relationship between Harrison Ford's character and this dog, Book. And it's a very, very delightful relationship to watch. Yeah. So it's a very heartwarming adventure. I wasn't going into this expecting, I don't know, the next Parasite, which I previously saw, or, you know, the next 1917. I wasn't going into that, into the film expecting that. But I actually liked this film a lot more than I thought I would. Like, I thought, I saw the trailer, and I'm going to talk about a bit about the CGI dog, but there's a CGI dog in the trailer, and that really, like, when I was watching the trailer, I thought, they're going to improve the CGI? And... I hate to say it, but they didn't. But to be honest, after a while, I kind of just got used to it. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of CGI if it's done well, if it's done unnoticeable, like it was in 1917 or, say, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or it's done so in a way that it's important, then I don't really mind. Us in this film, maybe they could have got a real dog, but some of the sequences, um, e there's some sequences, like there's a sequence where the dog goes under and under the ice and under water, and it just like, obviously they couldn't get a real dog to do that. So I understand when they got CGI, but, but that's probably my biggest complaint actually, the overuse of CGI in this film. This The film includes a lot of CGI, I mean a lot of CGI, a lot, a lot, a lot of the animals are just CGI. I kind of understand why, because Harrison, Harrison Ford probably didn't want to work with the dogs. You know, it is Harrison Ford after all, he's a 77 year old actor. But anyway, also, uh, a lot of the settings are CGI, and you kind of get the idea that Harrison Ford said, I'm only going to go to three locations, or not not many at least, not many locations during the whole shoot of the film. And that's kind of my biggest complaint about it. Like, you can kind of tell that some locations are set, you can kind of tell that um, everything's CGI. There's one really, there's one scene where you, you saw Harrison Ford and the dog, and the dog Buck, I love, I love that I love that name, I Buck, travelling down a river, and he, he did an aerial shot from, from the top, so basically a pan shot, or bird's eye view shot, whatever you want to call it, and you saw these fish in the sea, but all the fish were CGI, and I just, and it generally looked like 
they went on the video editor I used and see and used the CGI in that to edit in. It wasn't that good CGI. However, some of the CGI in the latest part of the movie actually works really, really well. And the dogs, like, book, and he, he gets to close to a white werewolf, and he get other werewolves as well towards him as well. And there's even a bear, which looks slightly realistic. The, old, the CGI looks really realistic. It's like they focus on the CGI in the latter part of the film more than the start of the film, because in the start of the film, you don't really get much good CGI, to be honest. Also, one of my complaints about the start of the film is that we don't really get to meet Harrison Ford's character properly till about an hour, 40 minutes to an hour into the film. And I think that's kind of a complaint, because if you've seen the posters in the film, you'll know that Harrison Ford is on the posters and he's there with dog, the dog book. So you kind of get the idea, okay, it's an adventure story of those two. They're going to meet, they're going to go on an adventure together, and one of them is probably going to find their destiny. It, is what they call it in the film. But then it's not. As I start the film, Buck has a different owner, a much more higher class owner, and then he gets captured, and then he gets sent to another owner. So you kind of get... And then the, the other owners are, like, focused on for at least half an hour in the film. There are some very entertaining sequences with the owners that have Buck before Harrison Ford. So it's not always... You know, I'm not saying that when he's not... When Buck's not with Harrison Ford, it's not entertaining, but it just took quite a bit of time to get to, act, to actually Harrison Ford's characters in the film, and I was kind of expecting to just jump in with that. You know, if you have Harrison Ford in the film, use him. And to be fair, they do use him. I'm not saying they don't use him at all, but I'm just saying I would have liked seeing that relationship between Harrison Ford and Buck being fleshed out a bit more. Because one of them ultimately has their fate at the end of the film. I'm not going to spoil who in case you do go and see the film, but one of them has their ultimate fate at the end of the film, and you just kind of feel, oh, but I would have liked to see, you know, perhaps that half an hour more. But at the same time, you literally, you saw development of Buck, the dog, which I wasn't expecting. I, I, I haven't seen Marley and Me, so I don't know really about dog films. I haven't seen You've Got Mail either. So I wasn't really knowing to expect it in terms of a dog film. And to be honest, this isn't really a dog film. It's more a film about... Yeah, I wasn't expecting that to have character film with a CGI dog. I really wasn't expecting that, and I was very happy that they actually put development in. Like I said, the film looks very nice, the cinematography is very nice. I'm not going to say the cinematography is award winning, but it's very nice to look at. And the shots in it are very nice to look at. It's, it's, all, it's all very nice, it's a delightful film to watch. Um, in terms of the script, yeah, it's good. I wouldn't say it's, again, I wouldn't say it's award winning, but again, it's heartwarming. The characters you meet along the way, for example, Count Julian's character, you know, they all play some significance in the story of Buck. Maybe not Count Julian's character as much, actually, but Harrison Ford in it, I really liked Harrison Ford in it. It's also, by, by the way, there's a scene where he's half naked in the river. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hoo, I'm really looking forward to that scene. But anyway, I actually really enjoyed the film. I wouldn't, I didn't expect to. After Parasite, I thought it was going to be a bit disappointing film. I'm pleasantly surprised. So all on all, call the call of the wild. That's what's called the call of the wild. It's a delightful, heartwarming film. And even so, I would have liked to see Harrison Ford's relationship with Buck being fleshed out a bit more. I'm still happy with what I got. And all in all, I'm going to say that the call of the wild is a delightful film. And I'm going to give it a nice 7 out of 10. Anyway guys, what did you think of the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you just not watch it? And if not, why not? Please let me know in the comment section below. Oh, that rhymes. I'm liking that now. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. As always, it's been a pleasure making the video. And it's been a pleasure for hoping for you guys to watch. Um, look forward to many reviews coming soon. Hopefully... Uh, get my Once Upon a Time in Hollywood review up as well. I'm going to start reviewing some of the Batman films uh, as I had a lot of fun with Batman 1989 a couple of months ago. So, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe, and check back to see more. See you guys again soon, and bye.